a pleasant STEM learners. This is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher. For today's discussion, we are now on week number seven, the estimate of a population. So at the end of this video lesson, we should be able to define point estimate and interval estimate. So what is the process of estimation? Estimation is the process of determining an unknown parameter values like the population mean. So the objective of estimation is to determine the approximate value of the parameter based on a certain statistics. So we always decide on certain things based from the estimate of the population. So there are two types of estimates. The first one is when you report a single value, that is what you call a point estimate. So it is a statistical value that is an estimate of the population. And look at that single value here on our horizontal line. So that value represents a single value. For the interval estimate of a population, when a statistician reported a range of values, it means it may contain in a certain parameter and there are also parts in which it is not contained on the parameter, then that is an interval estimate. So the interval estimate of a population is always um, anchored with its confidence interval. And later on, you will learn about the confidence interval. So let us differentiate a point estimate into a interval estimate. So for example, if the parameter is the average height of all PHS students is 5.10. For the point estimate, we will obtain sampling techniques. So based on 50 students, the average height of PHS students is 5.16. So this time, when we reported the value, it undergoes a sampling distribution. For the interval estimate, when you want to re, um, report two range of values, so based on 50 students, the average height of PHS students is between 5.11 feet and 5.21 feet. So we can easily distinguish the difference from a point estimate to a interval estimate. Let's have another example. The average age of all jeepney drivers in Pampanga is 49 years old. So that is the parameter. Now, when we perform sampling techniques, so we will have a statistical value which is representing the sampling distribution of the sample means. So suppose you want to report a single value. Based on 20 drivers, the average age of jeepney drivers is 48 years old. Or you want to report two values. Based on 20 drivers, the average age of jeepney drivers is 46 to 50 years old. So for today, we will not focus on how to report values using the point estimate, but we will focus more on the computation for the interval estimate of a population so that later on we can decide on things and interpret. So these are um, the measurements for a parameter versus a point estimator no, in statistics. So for example, when we have a population mean, then that talks about the population, mu, but as a point estimator of the mean, we use x bar. For the population standard deviation, we use sigma, while for the sample standard deviation, we use the small letter s. For the population variance, we have sigma squared, and for the sample variance, we have s squared. And for the population proportion, we represent it by p, while for the sample proportion, we have p hat. So as I told you a while ago, we will talk about the interval estimate of a population in which this interval estimate now gives a range of values that describes the population parameter. 
So it is a measurement which tell us if it belongs to the parameter or it does not belong to the parameter. So the confidence level will indicate which belongs to the population mean and which does not belong to the population mean. So it's a decision between the two things. Do you belong or you do not belong? So the confidence level of an interval estimate gives the probability that you are contained in the population mean. Now, the opposite of it is our alpha. Okay, and that alpha gives us a value that you do not belong to the population parameter. So we have the confidence levels in research. Huh? So we use the 90%, the 95%, and the 99%. For social sciences, huh, we usually use the 95%. Well, in scientific, we also both use the 95% and the 99%. So we only seldom use the 90% confidence level. And also in the um, Z table and D table, we also have other um, types of confidence levels, but the most frequently used is the 95% or the 99%. So for the margin of error, so it is defined as the maximum likely difference between the observed sample mean and the true value of the population mean. So later, we will have a formula in computing for the margin of error. And the margin of error is usually reported for statistical surveys, such as election surveys. So the, um, you will always see that margin of error because it gives us the length of the confidence interval which is equal to twice the length of the margin of error. So this is how you illustrate the confidence level. As I told you a while ago, it describes which belongs to the parameter and which does not belong. As you observe, the vertical lines here represent our confidence coefficients. So they are the boundaries of the parameter, whether you belong or you do not belong. The belongingness is described as one minus alpha. It means you are contained on the true parameter values. Well, if you do not belong, you belong to this um, part of the distribution, which is the left tail and the right tail. And both the left tail and the right tail are represented, is represented by alpha. And since we have two tails, alpha will be divided by two. So that is like one half alpha or alpha over two on the left tail and the right tail respectively. So if you are representing a true population parameter, you belong to the one minus alpha distribution. And if you do not belong to the population parameter, then you belong to the tails of the distribution. So we are now done with the definitions of an estimate or the process of estimation. For the next video lesson, we will talk about how to compute the confidence interval with known sigma. So again, this is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher.